Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about our moon. But more specifically, about a relatively incredible discovery that the moon does actually have a very unusual and somewhat intriguing influence over us after all. Something that is kind of obvious, but something that actually has a very interesting explanation. Something that relates to our sleep. And although it might seem like we're getting into astrology here, the reality is very easily explained scientifically, and it's actually something that kind of blew my mind. But anyway, let's talk a little bit more about this, starting with a bit of a history. And here I just wanted to talk about one term, the term lunatic, which is a multicultural term that usually refers to someone mad. But historically speaking, this term appeared back in the Roman Empire and before that during the classical Greek times, when various philosophers, including Aristotle that you see right here, and various other ancient, I guess you can call them smart guys, started to believe that the excess of moonlight might be responsible for various mental conditions. In other words, they tried to explain all of these psychiatric disorders as someone getting too much moonlight at night. And it wasn't until 1930s that the word lunatic stopped being used to describe someone who was mentally unwell. In other words, the word lunatic sort of classified anyone with any mental condition. But during the 20th century, our understanding of mental illness and of course psychiatry and psychology advanced to the point where we now have a pretty clear understanding that really none of these disorders are caused by the moon. And the idea that the moon somehow influences our behavior or, I guess in some sense, our psychological state has become more of a realm of astrology, not really astronomy, not really science. But nevertheless, we know that light from the moon, and specifically light in general, does play a big role in, for example, our sleep cycle and our general well-being. So we can't really discredit the moon completely, and we can't really assume that it has absolutely no influence. Because we know that the moon has a lot of different effects on other life. Specifically, we know that the tidal effects play a huge role in various aquatic species, and we also know that the moonlight itself is also used by various creatures around the planet to navigate, to orient themselves, and to even guide their own reproduction. One famous example is right here, the sandhoppers. But I think a really cool example, and probably one of the best known examples, is this really awesome event that I once got to experience as well, the coral spawning in the Great Barrier Reef in Australia. And what's interesting about this is that it always happens during the full moon. And this event is so well coordinated and so predictable that sometimes it can reach such tremendous sizes that it's apparently even visible from outer space. And if you want to learn more about this, check out the video from National Ocean Service that I'm posting in the description below. Interestingly, we also know that dung beetles that tend to do all of their dung beetle stuff at night require the moonlight to navigate and to get from one location to another. The way scientists learned this was actually very interesting, quite brilliant to be honest. Now we know that unlike the sun, the moon actually produces polarized light. When it reflects the sunlight, only light of certain polarization comes out. In other words, the light from the moon is not going to be in all directions, it's only going to be polarized in a certain direction. And surprisingly, these little guys can actually feel it. They somehow sense the polarization of light and are able to orient themselves using the polarized light from the moon. But if you shine the light of all polarization at them, they get confused. And because of this, when the scientists decided to shine the light of all polarization at a typical dung beetle in the darkness, the dung beetles got confused and were actually walking in circles instead of the usual straight line that they tend to go for. But one of the strangest and most unusual adaptations is from this unusual plant known as the Mormon tea or the joint pine. These unusual plants don't actually produce any flowers, they don't really produce any fruit, but they somehow need to pollinate, they need to attract insects. And they learn to do this during the full moon. During the full moon they start producing these unusual droplets, some which you can actually see right here, that are generally invisible, but they become extremely sparkly and very easily visible under polarized light. So once again, they use the light from the moon, and because of this sparkliness, a lot of insects, night insects, become drawn to these plants and thus allow them to pollinate and to essentially breed. And so once again, somehow the life found a way to use the moonlight for its own benefits. But what about us? What about humans? Well, naturally we know that during full moon, for example, there is more light. And so because of this, you'd expect that, well, maybe this would somehow influence our behavior as well. At the same time, we also know that too much light, specifically certain type of light, such as, for example, the light coming from the cell phone screen, which you might be looking at right now, 
can definitely influence the sleep cycle and can actually disrupt your sleep cycle, something that we refer to as the circadian rhythm. Now, there is actually a physiological explanation to all of this and it's very well known today, but unlike cell phone light or unlike any other artificial light, the light from the moon is cyclical and also predictable. And so hypothetically, because of this predictability, there should be maybe some sort of a correlation between lunar cycles and the sleep cycles. And if these cycles exist, how would you explain them? Well, that's pretty much exactly what the scientists in this paper decided to find out. They decided to investigate if the lunar cycles were connected to our sleep cycles and what are the possible explanations of all of this. And spoiler alert, they found one. And the explanation is very interesting. So first of all, how did they actually do this? Well, the primary investigator, who you actually see right here, decided to use three different communities or three different types of people in order to get as much data as possible. First, he used 98 participants of the Toba community, the native community residing in Argentina, who generally live in conditions without any electricity and without any artificial light. Then also communities with some artificial light present, and lastly, undergraduate students living in conditions where light was pretty much everywhere. And each of the participants was given a kind of a wristband activity monitor to essentially track the sleep patterns, kind of similar to wristbands that many of us have, to basically keep track of your sleep, keep track of your heartbeat, and so on. And so three different groups of participants were used in the study just to see if the effects, if there were any, would persist across different cultures, across different groups, and of course across various levels of socioeconomic development. The sleep activity for each of the participants was tracked for one lunar cycle, and all of the data was collected and then analyzed. And as you can probably imagine, the data does suggest that there is a connection between moonlight and the sleep cycle. The pattern that persisted no matter what the group participant was from, the group with artificial light, the group that had no electricity, or the group that was in between. And what the findings suggest is that when the moon is basically hidden from the view during the so-called new moon, most of us sleep longer hours and most of us usually go to bed much earlier. Whereas as the moon starts to come out, especially as it gets brighter and brighter in the night skies, we actually start experiencing less sleep. And all of this culminates during the full moon. During the full moon, on average, all of the participants were sleeping less and were also going to bed much later, or at least falling asleep later. This is not something that was somehow controlled through artificial light. There was even not something that was controlled by looking at the moon. This was a natural cycle that occurred every 29 days. Although the study does discover that the effects are even more pronounced for the communities that don't actually have a lot of artificial light. Which of course implies that someone living in the city would experience this as well, but not to the same extent. With some people even being affected by this quite dramatically, losing about one and a half hours of sleep during nights right before the full moon, when the moon was basically almost the brightest. And what this of course suggests is that interestingly, our cycles are synchronized with the moon even when we can't actually look at it, when we can't see it. So basically, Unlike the artificial light from a smartphone that can physically affect you and reduce the amount of hours you sleep, or at least change the quality of your sleep, the moon cycles seem to be innate. They seem to happen even though you cannot see the moon or if you never look at it. Basically, even if your city is already bright at night, you'll still experience these effects without even realizing the moon is full. And what this suggests, of course, is that these are evolutionary adaptations that persisted in humans for generations, centuries, and possibly millennia or even longer. In some sense, you can actually call these genetic memories. Memories of what our ancestors probably did in the past. Mostly because during the full moon, there's obviously more light, and thus you can probably do a lot more things than you can during a completely dark night. And one of the possible explanations to what you could be doing during these full moon nights comes from these wonderful communities that were actually studied in the study, such as the Toba community of Argentina. During these full moon nights, the activities such as fishing, hunting, social events, and even sexual relations increased in frequency according to various interviews conducted after the study. And this is of course also something that's well documented in historical literature. And though obviously in a city you can do most of those things at any time, it doesn't have to be during full moon, the so-called genetic memory or this adaptation that persisted with us for generations 
seems to suggest that our bodies still have this cycle inside of us. So basically, most of us, even if you grew up in a city, still seem to have a very similar pattern when it comes to the sleeping patterns that naturally has a 29 day cycle, even if the moon itself is not visible to us. Which by itself is actually an extremely important finding when it comes to the idea of genetic memories. And in the last few years, a lot of really interesting discoveries have been made in regards to these types of memories. We know that, for example, you can actually influence a memory of another creature by introducing certain types of genetic material into the other creature. This has been done with snails, for example, many times. For example, some snails have been taught to be afraid of certain stimuli that only the other snail experienced. This has been done many times and today we understand that this is essentially genes reproducing memories from another creature. We also know that certain mice that have been trained to do certain things really well will actually pass on their memories to their offspring and even their grandkids will still remember that whatever it is that they learned really well. In one specific case, the mice were actually taught to be afraid of a certain smell and this fear of that smell persisted through several generations of mice afterwards. And so in that similar manner, it seems that the moonlight and the experience that the moonlight created for some of our ancestors still persists with us today. And because of this, a lot of us have these different sleeping patterns. And so overall, this is definitely a pretty interesting discovery. So it looks like we do all share this unusual genetic memory and this very interesting phenomenon that seems to have been created by the moon itself, something that all of our ancestors experienced in the past. But I guess the next question here is to see if we can somehow use this to help people who are struggling with sleep. People that have a lot of different sleep disorders or if we can possibly use this to discover some other unusual genetic memories that all of us share. Now it could be not related to the moon at all, but it could be something that all of our ancestors experienced in the past. Something that could be universal to all of the humans on earth. Now this by itself is actually quite interesting. We basically have this one thing that unites everyone on the planet. At least according to the study. We still don't know if there are certain cultures and certain communities that don't actually have this, but chances are that all of us have this and all of us do experience this to some extent. Although this is something that only future studies will be able to answer. For now it's definitely a really interesting discovery and a really interesting paper that you can learn more about by looking at the article in the description below. But I guess for now that's all I wanted to mention. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Also maybe support the channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye. Whoa, hold on a second. That shirt right there? That's like the best shirt you can have in a scientifically published paper. That shirt is priceless. Can I have it? That's an awesome shirt. Anyway, that's all I wanted to mention. My husband's butt looks great in camo. That should be the title of this video. Anyway, bye bye.